People don't really think about climate change as a health risk until it's glaring them in the face, until you are inhaling smoke from wildfire or battling a hurricane or the floods where you can't access your medications or go to your primary care appointment that you had next week. So that was Liz Carey, a registered nurse that we spoke to last summer about health and climate change. Right, and now just this week, the American Medical Association has officially declared climate change a public health crisis. Meteorologist Elisa Rafa is here to break it down for us now. And Elisa, this could have a big impact in many ways. Yeah, so not surprising that they're going ahead and calling it a public health crisis. And um, what they did is they drafted policy that calls for a decrease in greenhouse gas emissions, a greenhouse in those carbon emissions to limit our warming to 1.5 degrees, which is what the Paris Climate Agreement also uh, aims for. So yeah, so shifting rain, warming temperatures, wildfires leads to things like physical um, and physical health, you know, uh, heat stresses. We've been talking a lot about heat sickness this week. Yeah. Allergy season, we talk about that a lot too. Even mosquito days, right? They love the heat, those <laughs> mosquitoes, so those viruses can spread more too. Yeah, and we do know about th that warming and we did hit our 100 degree mark yep. today, so tying a record. Are there any other health impacts that we need to know about? Mental health, and I think it's something that you often don't think about when it comes to mm -hmm. climate change, but um, there's a lot of new research that shows that this is a problem because extreme weather is increasing in frequency. Take a look at this graphic. The number of days between billion dollar disasters is decreasing. So you see how those bars are getting smaller? That is the number of days in between disasters so you just don't have time to cope with stress and loss in between these disasters because they're increasing so um, the public uh, American Public Health Association actually reports that more than half of adults report suffering from depression after disasters mm -hmm. and 45 mm -hmm. percent of kids too Wow. That makes sense That's because they're big events and then you, when you don't have the time to recover from it, it just compounds on itself. Right, right. and it takes people so long sometimes mm -hmm. to recover from those kinds of events. And that's stressful too. And then even, you know, like Liz Carey was saying too, road closures after flooding, things like that. Yeah. If you had a therapy appointment, mm -hmm. you know, because you're suffering from something, you can't get there now if there's no power or the mm -hmm. roads are closed or things like that. There are a lot of compounding kind of trickle down issues when it comes to this. Yeah. Yeah, so Elisa, what's kind of next? What do we do with this information? So doctor's orders, we have to reduce those greenhouse gas emissions. And I think us in our everyday lives is to kind of pay attention to um, the reports as they come out and every time the election cycle comes around, just pay attention to these um, issues and, and who has plans to kind of limit the greenhouse gas emissions because that's what's causing these problems. And there's lots of data that you can easily find yep. anytime, lots of resources out there to kind of dig into that data your, uh, yourself. So Elisa, Elisa Rafa here always uh, informing us about what's going on out mm -hmm. there. So uh, we appreciate you. Thank Thanks, you. Elisa.